Hello folks, this is Dr. Magal here. So today we are going to learn about graphic user interface. Uh, graphic user interface is one of my favorite topic in MATLAB and I just completely love it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, most of you, if not all, will definitely enjoy it because this is a part that involves least amount of programming. So there's, a, there's something to enjoy for everyone in here. Uh, so those of you who are not familiar with graphic user interface, um, uh, let me give you a small introduction of it. Uh, it is also known as GUI, G-U-I, the graphic user interface. Uh, and it sort of like uh, provides a physical interaction uh, to an application for a user where user has this ability to uh, modify the behavior or the functioning of the application. Uh, you can also create your own custom applications like we are going to do uh, a scientific calculator we are going to make our very own scientific calculator we are uh, going to create a graphical layout in, and it's going to perform some basic mathematical arithmetic operations and some scientific calculation as well uh, there are also ways uh, to do the gui uh, programmatically but we are only going to uh, focus on using uh, doing it interactively um, so it's a, a graphic user interface is basically a, a sort of like a design environment which uh, provide tools for designing user interfaces for custom apps uh, and using the guide layout editor which i'm going to show you uh, you can graphically design your own user interface uh, let's get started i'm going to clear my window here and all you have to do uh, is to type the command GUIDE guide and press enter and the window will pop up which is the quick start guide and it's going to ask you to you know um, whether you want to create a new GUI or you are if you are working on something existing so I was working on different files earlier so I have these options over here but I'm going to make a new one uh, so I select blank GUI and I click OK this is uh, remember your GUI is comprised of two components one is the graphical layout which is right here once you have the graphical layout ready and you save it and you compile your uh, you run this file it is going to automatically generate a .m file with the code for that graphical layout so there is no code involved with the graphical graphical layout of an application um, however since we are going to make this uh, a scientific calculator we're going to have to do a little bit of coding for doing basic uh, operations like uh, addition, uh, subtraction, division, or multiplication. So these are the basic controls that I was talking about earlier. Um, <clears throat> this is the push button, the spider, uh, radio button. So if you have, uh, it's so if you have like uh, three or four options, you want you want to use it, like any one of them. You can use radio buttons or text box. Edit text. Um, if you want to give a title, you have to get easy. Uh, if you want something to display uh, an answer or reason, for example, we're gonna have two screens. Uh, so you we'll want the input to be displayed on one screen, and after the math mathematical operation, you want the answer to be displayed on one screen. Uh, pop up menu. If you want user to not and then based on that action. Uh, it's going to perform a certain function uh, but we are not going to worry about this uh, uh, these controls for now uh, here is the axis uh, plotter uh, here is the panel uh, we're not going to use all of it but we're going to use most of it today so let's get rolling and uh, let's start working on the uh, calculator so it's going to be a calculator like I was saying um, and it's going to perform basic operation addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So let's start working on the numeric feedback first. So I need push buttons and I would need 10 of them from 0 to 9. So uh, let's go going. There's one. Uh, you can double click on it and, uh, or you can also go to right click and say property inspector and you can open it. Do you have the properties um, or the basic? Um, yeah, basic properties that you can change over here. 
If I have here, if you want to give a background to it, just say yellow. You can do that. If you want to change the font size, maybe you want to make it 10, you can also do that. Or you want to uh, make it bold, maybe, then you can also do that. Okay. Uh, two things which are extremely important here down at the bottom screen. Thing is something, uh, what do you want to be displayed on the push button? So this, let's say this is my uh, one, one button. So all I have to do is to erase the text and say one. Press enter and it's going to display one. So similarly, I'm going to have to do it for zero, two, three, four, and so on, two, nine. Um, style, it's the push button if you want to change it to something else, either the radio button, you can also do it. I had already seven port buttons, so there's no uh, Each and every, so uh, your graphic layout you do is going to be a combination of different options. This is one of the you're going to have many more uh, aspects like this, which would make your video a bit for the software. Each uh, offset would have a unique handle name or tag. So that, that, this is a very important thing. No uh, two offsets or more objects can have the same tag name so I will be So I'm just giving a tag name or a handle name. I'll say one. Okay. So like I was saying, uh, GUI is basically a collection of the objects. Uh, we, we are working on one uh, object number one. We're going to have many objects. Every object has a unique handle name or a tag name. And every object has some properties. Okay? So, uh, meaning, uh, when a user comes in and press the button, it's gonna do something. So it's an action button. Ideally, you would like the user to press this button and that one button will be displayed on the screen, which we are going to work on uh, in a little uh, bit of time. And then uh, after uh, doing some mathematical operation, depending upon what user uh, enters, uh, it is going to display the answer uh, over here. So we're gonna be needing two LCD screens, but now right now we are working on the numeric effect. Uh, once I have that, I can just easily just copy and just press Control V. Okay, and then I can arrange these whichever way I would like. Uh, I'll just use the basic format. There we go. You can change the background color to your liking. Um, just went with yellow. Here. Okay, one button here. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is I'm, I'm gonna change this one to zero uh, string and tag name zero. Remember no two objects can have same handle name or tag name. This is one. This got to be two. So I'll change it to two. And then push button. You can leave it to push button two as well. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm just gonna make it a little easier for me to remember which one is which. This is three. So this is three. Um, four. Four here. Uh, this is five. Five. Let's change the tag name or handle name to five. Six. the string as well uh, this is going to be seven seven tag name seven eight and this is going to be nine all right so it looks like I've taken care of my uh, key, uh, numeric keypad if you like you can also give it a panel um, Example, something like this. Uh, if when you do that, and all your buttons go at the background, also, you can always you can right click on the panel and say, say okay. And if you don't need anything here, like the it's in panel here, you can actually remove that as well. You don't. If you want something to be displayed here, like numeric keypad, you can also do that. Okay. Uh, and then if you like to change the font size, you can also do that here. Um, you want to make it bold, you can also do that. Uh, there you go. You can adjust the size, make it fit. 
okay um so i got these two extra buttons maybe i can use them for doing some kind of uh, operations okay so this could be used for addition so i want plus sign to appear on that button and i'll say add name tag uh this could be uh minus sign uh subtract sub i'm gonna need two more of these so i just copy and paste Uh, this will be multiplications of steric. <clears throat> okay, uh, so this would be steric. Uh, here I would say multiply. And then this would be division. So word backslash uh, tag middle name divide. <clears throat> I'm also going to need a equals to sign here, somewhere over here. So I uh, control V and then I can adjust the size maybe uh, extend it horizontally like this and say this is my equals to. I always wanted to have a big equals to sign on my calculator. Here's your chance as well. Equals to okay. <clears throat> uh, I would also go ahead and give uh, a panel to this. Okay, so it, it's all how you want this is your application okay this is how you want your application to look like you can make it look fancy colorful uh, this, this is your own product okay you have the copyright you can change it <clears throat> okay if you want to change it maybe um, okay, so, not to, Medical operators, something, <clears throat> or you can just say operators. Go make it size ten, uh, board. Okay, sweet. Uh, we need now two screens. Okay, so we get the numeric pad, we got the operators. We need two screens, and for that, you see there are two options: edit text. Edit text is only for the title, okay? Um, uh, we're not gonna worry about the title for now or, you know, having a uh, some kind of text or comment you wanna put, um, you can use edit text for that. Uh, but for static text is uh, something that you wanna use here for LCD screen, okay? So this is how it's gonna work. The user comes in, he's gonna enter the numbers here. Let's say he says one plus one. You want that one plus one to appear over here on the screen. And once equals to is pressed, the answer would be displayed in another screen right here. So in other words, this is your input screen and this is your output, okay? Um, we don't want anything to be displayed here, static text, so I'm just gonna make it blank. Just delete everything. Also gonna leave the tag as it is, text one. And here, text two, just gonna uh, leave it as it is. Tag name, but I, will do, I do not need any screen. Here. Uh, you can give it a color. I'll give it blue. Also, we make it fourteen. Um, board here. Uh, this would be let's say purple, and this will be twelve. <clears throat> okay, sweet, awesome. Let's go ahead and give this a panel too. Yes. Again, right click and send to back. Uh, you can arrange the size if you like. There you go. Uh, and then you can arrange the size of the panel as well. Here, maybe you might want to say, um, uh, may by Mackenzie Moss, maybe, okay, uh, I'm gonna change the font size, make it a little bigger, over 12, <clears throat> maybe 14, and then make it bold, make it bold, okay, 
uh, looks like it is almost ready uh, okay there is one thing that is missing uh, and something we can work on uh, which would be uh, we want a clear button okay so this would allow the user to clear the button uh, to uh, press on the clear button and it will clear all the fields over here these two fields uh, so we need one more push button uh, push button <clears throat> and then I'll say uh, this is my clear button a c l e a r uh, tag name would be clear okay <clears throat> and make it bigger or Right, sweet. Uh, looks like the graphical layout is absolutely ready. Once you have the graphical layout ready, you go here, you want to save your file. <clears throat> uh, and then let's, let's say calculator. Calculator. And I'm going to save it. Once you save it, see it automatically generated the .m file, uh, same name. Um, both your file calculator.m which is right here and calculator.fig they have to be in the same directory if one is in the another the other one is another it's not going to work okay uh, and what you see over here is a code for the graphical layout that you have just created this is the graphical layout uh, and let me just go through uh, some of these uh, lines over here so this is basically a GUI name, which is your file name, which is the calculator right here. Okay. Um, and uh, this uh, single ton basically allows you to select between two behaviors for the figure window. Uh, we only have one, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, callback functions, uh, the, each and every handle uh, that we created, for example, every object that we have, is going to have a callback function which means when user presses this button what should happen so all of these are action buttons meaning when some uh, when the user presses these buttons something happens when four is pressed it appears over here when equals two is pressed the answer of the equation over here will be displayed over here uh, so this is what uh, callback functions are <clears throat> the ui uh, can be accessed only from within a callback okay uh, the UI cannot be accessed from the command line or from a script. So, for example, um, if this uh, uh, need to have a callback function, each of each of these uh, handles will have a callback function. So, for example, for this handle, uh, the callback function, we go to right-click and we go to view callbacks and we say callback function. So, we need to do the coding for that over here. Okay, it's not like we can do the coding over here. This is for the two button. This is for the sub button. This is for the add button. Okay, so it's easier to find the callback function by right clicking on each object and then just selecting callback. And it's going to take you, hey, you need to do the coding for eight right here. Okay, uh, <clears throat> anyhow, we also have a uh, uh, layout uh, to call the layout as created by the user. So this, uh, this command is basically importing uh, this layout into that .m file, okay? Um, and the handles, uh, uh, those are the objects, uh, which are the object in the figure or the layout, layout and uh, what are their properties and applications? Uh, for example, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And if it's scientific, you, maybe you can add sine, cosine, um, uh, trigonometric functions, other, other trigonometric functions, or square root, or power, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> once we have the graphical layout ready, uh, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a callback function for each handle or object. Meaning when any button is pressed, it should perform a certain task. Uh, for push button zero, uh, for push button zero, we'll start with here uh, from zero. So I go to view callback function okay what should happen when zero button is pressed well when zero button is pressed it should appear over here uh, what is the handle name what is the address of this location 
the address for this location or tag name is x1 okay and what is the location for this this is zero tag name zero okay right click again go to callback here so i'm going to start my coding here and i'm going to create a just a variable a equals to this is the command get parenthesis open handles dot handles dot <clears throat> text one comma string okay this is what uh, this means basically uh, when zero is pressed it should be displayed over here okay uh, and then you say wh what is the address handles dot text one is the address and what is the format of that it is going to be in a string format okay um, then we say strcat um, bracket open a comma and we want it to be displayed since it's a zero see so we want it to be displayed as zero okay this basically what it means is a this is a short form uh, this is a command called string concatenation uh, previously we did matrices and we did some concatenation that means we can add two matrices either vertically or horizontally here we are adding numbers horizontally for example if someone wants to do 11 plus 11 meaning when uh, one needs to be pressed twice in order to make 11 so it will be horizontally can, uh, uh, concatenated over here okay one plus one uh, if we don't do that then uh, even we press one it will only display one only once not twice so that's why we do it for all of it a zero one and all the way to the nine okay <clears throat> okay and then we say uh, set handles dot text one comma in single inward comma we say string <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and what is that number a0 it is stored in variable a I'll just say a here okay now what is what is this uh, this line is doing this line it, what it does so for example let me go back to the graphical layout this is our calculator user comes in and he wants to do a calculation 11 plus 11 okay when the user presses one twice that means 11 appears here and then he presses he or she presses plus sign we want that sign to appear over here so we want it to be displayed like 11 plus and then we press 11 again so all of that equation 11 plus 11 needs to stay here so that's why we say set handles dot text one when the user presses zero it should stay there where what is the address of this location text one we say set handles dot text one this handles dot text one is basically this box right here okay uh, and then uh, what should it display it the form the the format is string and the value is stored in a which is zero right here and similarly we do a similar code for all of the um other push buttons <clears throat> we just did it for zero uh, now we are going to do it for one so i right click and i say callback function here i right click and i paste it the only thing that needs to change here is zero to one everything else is going to remain same it is okay that i'm using the same variable again and again because these are separate callback functions this callback function has nothing to do with this callback function okay um, remember each handle has a unique callback function now let's do it for two callback here's that function copy paste the well, only thing we need to change here is zero to two because MATLAB doesn't know what 2 is, so we need to define that string concatenation. Uh, a is basically a string, which is 2, okay? Remember, the string can have alphanumeric, numeric, uh, string, special characters, any kind of data, okay? So that's why we always uh, specify the format string. Uh, so we did it for 2. <clears throat> Let's do it for 3 now. Paste 3. <clears throat> Go back to your graphical layout again. Let's do it for four now. Uh, call back. 
there is a four paste four let's do it for five the only thing that needs to change here is zero to five uh, let's do it for six I like to do it this way uh, so I don't forget uh, <clears throat> the code for any object <clears throat> remember these all are objects and handles okay you can either call them object or handle I just use that term interchangeably let's do it for seven there you go um, let's now do it for eight <clears throat> Okay, this right here, paste, this needs to change to 8, 9, I call back function, uh, this needs to change to 9, there, um, I believe I've done all of it, let me make sure I did it for this as well, okay, alright. Uh, now let's move. We're gonna uh, we're gonna leave the equals to sign over here for now. <clears throat> let's work on the callback functions for these four handles. Um, right click, um, callback function. Uh, here is for add. Here it is. Uh, so you copy your code here. Only thing that is going to change is plus. Okay. Uh, remember uh, the plus sign is not. Uh, doing any kind of operation here what plus does when you when the user presses the plus button here it's only going to be displayed here there's only one button in this whole calculator actually two buttons <clears throat> and I'm gonna only mention one and I'm gonna let you guess the what is the other one there's only one button that is performing some kind of action which is the equals to sign all of this will be displayed over here so you will have an equation when you press equals to the equation in this box is going to be evaluated and the answer is going to be displayed here okay? and once we have the application ready you'll see the other uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you the other action button the other action button would be the clear meaning when clear is pressed anything or everything in this these two boxes will be cleared okay <clears throat> okay so we just did the callback function for plus yeah <clears throat> Let's do it for let's subtract my sign. Okay. Can just do minus. Uh, let's do it for multiplication. There you go. <clears throat> call back, call back function. Here's the divide. Paste. And this needs to be yeah forward backslash <clears throat> okay we got taken care of uh, the mac keypad and we got taken care of the operators let's now work on the equals to sign uh, again the when equal to is pressed <clears throat> the mac lab will take the equation from here that is inputted earlier by the user and displays the answer over here so we need to get the equation from here the address is text1 for this object and display the answer over here text2 okay so the first thing is to get the data so we say let me just go back here right click and say callback is the callback right here for equals to <clears throat> okay we have to say a equals to get <clears throat> handles dot text1 comma in the format string okay <clears throat> and then say a equals to evaluate that's the command we're going to use <coughs> <clears throat> uh, evaluate a the equation is stored in a so i say evaluate a the answer is now in a so i'll say set handles it's about time to display that answer into the handles dot text two comma string the answer is stored in variable a there you go right sweet <clears throat> here you go um what else now we need to work on the clear right click uh 
how back okay once the clear is pressed it should clear both the screens which is the which have the address text one tag name and text two okay let's clear them how would you clear them you use command set handles dot text one get to that location comma string format and you just say in single word comma blank space that means <clears throat> it's going to when the clear button is pressed it's going to re replace it with a string which is basically one space one character space blank space similarly you do the same thing for <clears throat> text two okay so i'm gonna go ahead and save my code here uh this is this was the programming part um i'm just gonna make sure that i've got uh code for everything in there so one two subtract add zero right here three um five six nine uh eight <clears throat> seven uh four divide multiply um where equals to all right looks like i got everything ready let's go ahead and save it uh, and let's go ahead and run it and see if it's working or not. There you go. When you run it, this is how you had your layout for the calculator. And let's see if it's working. One plus three equals two. Four. Hey, it's working. Nice. Let me clear that and see if that works. Cool. Fifty times three equals two. 150 let me clear that again 50 plus 3 equals to 53. awesome okay 69 divided by 13 equals to 5.30769 so this is the calculator your very own calculator um, you can add more functions or more operators to it for example sine cosine square root um, let, me, let me show you actually uh, let's uh, add few uh, other operators let's see uh, go back to my calculator uh, and then I'm going to extend this and then I'll just copy and paste and I'll say this is my square root <clears throat> so I'll uh, I'll say SQRT and then tag square root okay all right uh, and once you once you make any change to your graphical layout all you have to do is uh, basically uh, save it and it will make that change over here so here's that callback function for square root so how do you want that square root to work uh, that square root is basically going to take the number from here and is going to display the uh, answer over here so the very first thing we need to do is we need to get the number here okay um, number for here which is I'm just gonna use a variable a equals to okay what is the number, the location, text one, uh, get handles <clears throat> dot text one, again, format string. Okay, now that num, whatever that number is, it's in a string format and it is in a variable A. Remember, in a, you cannot do any operation in a, in a, in a string. Okay, so you have to convert that string into number. So I'll say a equals to str to num. Okay, now this a is basically a number. Now I can do math. It's very much like when you were when you creating a cell array, and you were trying to import the data from cell uh, into a matrix form. You had to convert cell into matrix, and then you would do uh, you know plot or graph or any other analysis on it. So it's very much like you had a string. You convert it into number that a is a number now and then 
for, for square root, we use command square sqr key a. Let me just make sure it's sqrd help sqrd. Yeah, square root sqrd. Okay. <clears throat> Sweet sqrd. Key. Let's convert it back to string now. Num to string of a. And once it calculates the square root of the number over here, it needs to be displayed over here. What is the location here? Text to set handles dot text to string a. Okay, let me just go through this code again. The very first thing we did, we need to get number from this location. Uh, this location, we got the number. Uh, it is in a string format and it is stored in A. Before we can do any mathematical operation, remember we are going to calculate the square root of that number. Uh, we need to convert it into a number. So we say string to number of A, which is this right here. And then this number format is then stored in A again. Then I take a square root of this number, which is stored in A, and then I convert that number back again to a string so I can display it over here in the string format. Okay. Uh, so we got the code ready for a square root. Let's go ahead and save it. Um, and then uh, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so I take a number 69 and then I press square root. We go 8.306. Clear. Uh, 12 times 12 equals to 144 let's use 144 square root 12 there you go okay so you can make changes you like um, you can have another screen if you like well let's say you want to do sign um, or maybe a power button so let's just copy here and then this would be the <clears throat> power button here there you go uh, and then save it I'll just copy the code from here uh, here's the power here code here all we need to do is actually we don't need this evaluate and I'll just copy this code from here the code for power will be similar to what we had for 0 to 9 actually. only thing that needs to change is you know this hat thing is a op, uh, op, uh, power operator in MATLAB. All right, uh, let's go ahead and save it and run it. Let's see if this working. Two power two equals to four. Okay, three power three equals to nine. Oh, sorry, three times three nine. Nine times three is twenty-seven. Right. Uh, nine power two, which is nine times nine equals to eighty-one. There you go. Okay, let's say if you want to add a sign. <clears throat> uh, let's add another. I'll just copy and paste here. Double click. Uh, let's make the string sign. And give it a tag name here, lamp sign. Uh, save it. Okay. Uh, the coding for that would be very similar to square root because you are doing an operation. gonna change uh, is from square root you say sign because that's what the command is to find out the sign help sign sign of the argument in radians okay <clears throat> remember this is the answer is going to be in radians if you have to tell the answer in degrees you're gonna have to multiply it with pi and then divide it by 150 Okay, now uh, save it, uh, run it, zero, sign, sign zero is zero, clear, 90, sign, 
0.894 again this is in radians uh, so this is how you would do it guys um, that's all from uh, today's lecture um, today was the introduction to graphic user interface and I showed you how to make a basic calculator and then you can add more operators more functions to it make it more scientific so what I would like uh, for you all to is to add uh, other trigonometric functions cosine uh, tangent power maybe you want to add a decimal point I don't have a decimal point here so if one, somebody wants to put like 3.14 you can have a dot operator here as well uh, uh, exponential and uh, other operators that you may like okay uh, that's all from today's presentation. I hope you enjoy and I'll uh, see you uh, Till I have the next uh, video ready. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Bye